So my last tutorial was this huge, massive thing. And this one's going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit more self-contained. And that's the benefit of doing a longer tutorial, I think. You have a broad foundation to build upon for future work. And I can do smaller things like this. I want to talk about snapshots with regard to event sourcing, why you use them and how. But actually, before we do that, let's look at another storage mechanism that we talked about last time that's used in event sourcing systems. Each consumer has something called a position store as a dependency. When your consumers are running, they store their position periodically. Now, this is so that if the components stop running and are restarted, the consumers can restart their work at their last known position. And this is very helpful if you have a long-running component that has a million or more messages. It would take a, quite a long time on a component restart to process all of those messages again from the beginning. So let's see that in action. And maybe look at the database to see how this is stored in the message store. I've got a batch script here that will insert 100 or so messages into the message store. As you can see, each claim will be unique, as is each email address. So there will be about 100 different streams all in the same user email address category. Now, before we run this script, we're going to have to actually start the database. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, the database is up. Let me just clear any uh, tables. And then let's go ahead and run the batch script. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Okay, so that wrote 100 claim messages to the message store. Now let's run the component. Okay, we see it processing a whole bunch of messages. And now let's go ahead and go to the database. Okay, so we're in the database we can try selecting from the message store messages table. But as you can see, uh, it's going to take a while before we scroll into what we need. So we're going to actually be using one of the views that eventi or message DB provides. And so to look at that, whoops there are a certain amount of uh, views that we're, we can use. Uh, we'll, we'll be using the category type summary, which basically collates the category and the message types that are available. Okay, so you can see the categories and the messages that are recorded on those categories. As you can see, we have another type of stream here called the user email address colon command plus position with a message type of recorded. Uh, similarly, you have a user email address transaction colon position uh, category with an also recorded message. So let's go ahead and look at those messages. Okay, so um, here, as you can see, the position is stored in a recorded event, marking the last global position of the message this particular consumer has processed. So if we look, maybe we can see it. Uh, 256, oh, or rather 255. Let's try that. So the last recorded position was 255, this particular message. Okay, 
This is actually also where identifiers come in handy because two consumers can be reading from the exact same category. And if they don't have an identifier, then they'll be reading from the same position store, but maybe processing messages at different rates, therefore causing those consumers to skip messages on restarts. Let's see what that looks like. Let me close out of this component. Let's go ahead and look at the code here. If you remember, registration component is reading from the registration category from its consumers events. And then registration view data is also reading from the registration category, but it has an identifier set. And we can actually see this when the uh, consumer or when the component is started. So let's go to the registration component and then start. As you can see, the um, position location here is at registration colon position for the registration consumer events, the events consumer. Whereas if we go to the registration view data component and run that, this position location is at the registration colon position dash registration view data. So all the recorded events will be stored there instead. And so they don't collide with one another. All right. Okay, so we've talked about the position store. Now we can talk about snapshots where with positions, you would store your consumer's current position in order to determine where to start your consumer in order to not reprocess every single message upon component start. The purpose of snapshots is to store your entity's state so that you don't have to project the entity from the beginning of its stream. Now, the entity store already utilizes an in-memory cache, and then the store class will fetch entities from the message store, applying different events to its memory projecting that entity with those events. But that cache doesn't help us if we're booting up the component and have a million or more messages to process within a certain stream. Imagine in our user email address component that jane at example.com has an inordinate number of messages to project. And that's where snapshots come in. They'll store the entity's current state periodically, thereby optimizing for future reprocessing. Let's take a look at that in action. I've got a batch script here that will insert 100 or so messages into the message store like before, but here we're inserting into one single stream. Okay, so let me go ahead and exit out of psql, and I'll run the script to clear the tables again. Actually, before we run the script, the batch script, we do need to actually update the code so that snapshots are enabled because snapshots are disabled by default. First things first, we go to the store. As you can see here, we've got our category user email address. We've got our entity user email address, which is right here. And we've got our projection, which is right here. And we've got our reader. So what we do here is to implement snapshotting, we use the snapshot macro with entity snapshot postgres and we can set the interval which we'll set to 100. The second thing we need to do is update our entity. So the reason we update our entity is that we're taking the entity and storing it into the message store as JSON. So we need to convert all these attributes to JSON. Now strings and integers are fine, but time specifically needs to be formatted into ISO 8601 format. To do that, we need to transform it. And the way Eventi does this is with the, the transform module. So you have to define this in your entity. And inside the transform module, you define two methods. The instance method, which takes raw data so what this does is it reads raw data from the message store, and we need to convert that into an entity. And then the second method is the raw data method, which is the which is the which is the opposite. 
we take an instance of the entity with all of its attributes and we need to convert it into JSON. So let's implement the instance method first. We just take the raw data attribute of claimed time because that's the only time attribute we have that the only attribute that won't convert neatly into JSON. And we parse that. And then we generate an entity from the raw data. And then that's it. For the raw data method, uh, we go the other way. We convert the, the instance into a hash. And then we return it. But before we do that, we want to convert the time attribute into an ISO 8601 format. And we can do that with this method. And I think we're pretty much done with uh, the snapshot. So now we can run it. So let me go back to the user email address component. Let me uh, write the, let me run the batch script. So we've written 100 messages all to the same stream, and then we run it. We run the component, that is. OK, all of these are running. And now we can just log into the message store again. And let's go ahead and look at that um, category type summary. So I see a claimed message and a lot of claim rejected messages. I think maybe I need to insert one more message. Ah, here we go. Yes. So we see a a new category here called user address snapshot and a recorded event there. So let's go and see what that recorded event looks like. So here it is on position global position 305. We see a recorded event in the user email address colon snapshot category. And as you can see, the entity data is what our actual entity looks like. We have an encoded email address, an email address, a user ID, claimed time, and sequence. And we have much the same thing here. Uh, we have a user ID, sequence, claimed time, email address, encoded email address, and this tells us that the entity version was 99, meaning that the position was at right here, I believe, this position of 99. Not global position, 301, but position 99. So this is the version of the event that they're saving with sequence 256, I believe. Yes. Sequence 256, right here. And that's snapshots. So we've seen snapshots being stored in the message store. Let's actually see them being used within the component. Um, and we could see this through the logs that the component outputs, but um, we need to actually update something on the test script. So we can see a bunch of log tags here, um, but none of these really pertain to uh, snapshots. So let's comment this out. And then change this to snapshot and cache. And we also want to change the log level. To trace. Okay, and then, then that should be good. And let's go ahead and run it.
if we scroll up, we can see that there is a log here where the the snapshot was red. And as we see here, the version that was read from the snapshot was version 99. Same one that we saw here. And so now we know that uh, snapshots are being used in the component. And that's it. That's snapshots. Let's consider when we would use snapshots and when we wouldn't. We would really only use snapshots for components whose life cycle was considered particularly long lived or perhaps infinite. For example, the registration components life cycle, I want to pull that up. Um, the registration components life cycle could be measured in a maximum of three events. You've got your initiated event, your email accepted event, and your registered event. Or you could have the initiated event, email rejected, and canceled. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to use snapshots in the registration component, but it makes a lot more sense to use snapshots in the user email address component because the expected life cycle there is infinite. Uh, we can expect many different claims to be made for a single email address. And we don't want to project all those messages onto an entity from a cold restart. Therefore, using snapshots in this case makes a lot of sense. Just keep that in mind when you look to implementing snapshots in your own components. That's all I have for you today. If you have questions for me, be sure to check out my website, josephcho.com, or you can message me on any of the social media platforms I'm on. I'm on Twitter, GitHub, Reddit, so on and so forth. Thank you.